Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. It's really nice to uh, see people literally tuning in from all over the world. Um, let me know. Can you hear me okay? Uh, can you see me okay? I see uh, nice greetings from Sue from Wales, Sophie, Dennis, Michelle, James, Moana, Susan. Susan Cannon, that's my mom's name. <laughs> Mom, I mean, she doesn't live in Merseyside, but uh, excuse the double take. It would be just like her to show up. Uh, a quick introduction before, oh good, thank you guys for letting me know. A uh, quick introduction before I call Jack up. Um, welcome to uh, LearnBridge Online. My name is Bajir. I'm a fellow bridge learner. I myself learned how to play bridge online. Uh, at the time, it was really hard for me to find online lessons. And so I made the site so that bridge learners like us can learn from some of the best teachers from around the world. It's been a real honor and pleasure having Jack Stock and teach his online lessons at LearnBridgeOnline.com. Um, I've gotten to know him as a friend, and um, he is just a phenomenal teacher. You're in really, really good hands with him. He's one of the most respected, well-known, and loved teachers in the UK and Ireland. Uh, so whenever we do this and we look for the chance to do this, to help uh, introduce the game to new people, um, it's, it's, it is a real point of pride that we're able to do these events. So thank you guys for uh, taking the time to join us. Uh, there's a lot of other things you guys could have chosen to spend your mornings or evenings. Um, so it means a lot that you're here. Thank you guys for taking the time. Hey, Graham, uh, I, I see a message from Jack. All right, I think we um, are just about ready to get going. So uh, why don't we launch into it? Without further ado, I'm gonna call Jack on up here and maybe you can help welcome him with a virtual round of applause or a, a nice comment. Here he comes. Hey there, Jack. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, so, thank you so much for uh, for doing this again. The, the last time was so fun. It was great fun, wasn't it, back in January? And I'm pleased to say most of our, our viewers then are still watch, watching, you know, having lessons, playing bridge now, either virtually or in the real world. You know, um, bridge clubs are reopened. People are actually holding cards in their hand, Bajir. It's 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 really remarkable how many folks from the last batch are still learning and playing. Yeah, so hopefully we can uh, bring in some new players starting today. Um, yeah, I, I'd be interested to know how many of you, uh, some of you said in the comments, have never played bridge before, or maybe uh, you already learned and you're looking for a refresher. Either way, you're in good hands with Jack. Yes, uh, basically, Bajir, um, you know, don't, don't be... Don't be nervous, anyone. Um, we start from the very beginning. We assume no knowledge of bridge or cards or anything. In fact, Bajir, the first thing I always say when I teach beginners over the last 20 years is this is a pack of cards. <laughs> it's a good place to start. Yeah. What do, but what do we do with them? Yeah, well, you, <laughs> you deal them out. <laughs> but we won't be doing that today because it's all done online. Um, but we do start from absolute scratch. So, you know, we don't assume any knowledge of card games, um, you know, bridge, whist, anything. So and I know there'll be a few people watching who learned in the distant past. You know, someone's already said they learned 30 years ago. So that's great, too, because I'll bring them right up to date with the modern game, which I teach um, across England, Wales, and actually now the rest of the world. We've got quite a few international viewers. New Zealand, haven't we? We've got Cape Town. It's, uh, it's, it's really fun. Well. Imagining us all together in a virtual classroom from uh, the far corners of the earth. Well, uh, Jack, <laughs> why don't I turn it over to you? Um, yeah. As always, I'm here for tech support, so just call out my name. I'll help switch between screens. And to anyone watching, um, you know, uh, we're dealing with technology. Let's knock on wood. Hopefully uh, everything will behave. But if anything runs into trouble, I'll pop back on and we'll uh, see what we can do. That's great. Yes. And, and Gonzo is off to a head start. She knows that it's a pack of cards, <laughs> what, what a pack of cards looks like. That's it. That's half of it right there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You got That's half the problem, isn't it? Well, that's great. I think I'm ready to go. We're all set, Bajir. Um, welcome, everyone. What more can I say? Welcome to the show. Uh, roughly about an hour long. This is an introduction to Bridge. So we really take you through pretty much the second half of the game, which is playing out the cards. 
Uh, and at the end of this, at the end of this one hour lesson, you'll probably be a bit confused. You'll be asking, what does that mean? What does that mean? Oh, dear. Um, it doesn't really start to make sense until you start playing the cards for yourself, either online or face to face, the real cards in your hand. So, yes, yeah, so if you're feeling a bit lost at any point, don't worry, you're not being thick. Um, bridge, you don't learn overnight. But I think we're going to have a wonderful time learning over the coming weeks and months. Uh, right, Bajir, I think that's enough chat. Should we get down to business of the first slide? And it's here, ready, waiting for you. So, introduction to Bridge. Yeah, that's just a reminder of where we are. <clears throat> the first two lessons are at 10 o'clock, and you register on the website learnbridgeonline.com uh, if you haven't done so already to get your first two lessons for free. Right, let's move on. Yeah, welcome. It's a wonderful game, and you can play at any age, really. You can be eight to 88. Yeah, the, I've taught, I've, I think probably the person I've taught as a beginner, the oldest person was about 80. Um, it's very social and a lot of fun. I hope you agree with me. Uh, played by millions of people around the world and uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands in the UK. Right, there we go. Oh, hang on. Um, and there, yes, bridge is a game of four players and you play in a partnership. OK, so that's why it's so social. It's not like chess where it's just one against one. And there's lots of chatting. You can talk to your partner, talk to your, your opponents as well in a friendly game. Um, but North and South play together. Yeah, and East and West. So we play with each other and the opponents play against each other. And you normally you sit around a table, um, a square table <laughs> uh, with four chairs. And one person deals out all the cards face down. It's obviously slightly different online. But you can play bridge equally as well online as you can face-to-face uh, -face in, in reality. So here are some of my celebrity friends sitting around the table. We've got Brad Pitt playing with Julia Roberts, East West. And there's our old friend George Clooney, very good bridge player, old friend of mine, playing with Anne Widdicom. Uh, I did make up that bit about being an old friend of mine. I wish he was a friend of mine. Um, maybe he plays bridge, I don't know. <clears throat> um, I, I have no idea. Um, but they're just helping us out today. So uh, George is playing with Anne, uh, interesting partnership. Uh, but that's what happens at the table, yes. You have the, uh, the compass, North, South, playing with East, West. And you register for free, of course, on that link. We've talked about that, learnbridgeonline.com. It's on the homepage. All right. There are 52 cards in a pack of cards. Yeah. Um, here's our first question. Um, I think one thing that's very important about my online courses is that they're interactive. It stops you from falling asleep as well. Um, so here's the first question, everyone. Let, let's all get on the chat box, or as many as you who can. How many cards does each player get? All right. And there's four players, remember. So basically, if I'm dealing these face-to-face... I'm going to deal them out one, two, three, four, face down, so no one sees them. Okay, that's what's going to happen. If I was playing in a real game of bridge, I'd be dealing them out one, two, three, four. Susan's first up. I can see your questions coming in. So we would deal them out face down one, two, three, four, until all 13, sorry, all, all the cards are dealt out. Yeah. Okay, and then what we would do in a normal game Online, it's much easier. All the cards are laid out for you, of course. You don't really need to do anything. But if you're playing in a real game, you would sort out the cards like that, all 13, yeah, and put them into suits. Um, well, well done for using the chat box. Anne, Gary, James, uh, Porter, any others coming in? Any other arms? I'm just waiting for a few more. Have a go. Have a guess. Be wild. But, yes, it's 52 minus uh, divided by 13, sorry. Is sorry, what am I talking about? Moana coming in. A few answers just still waiting for North Sachs. Yeah, there's 52 cards. I'll start again. There's four players. So 52, you don't really need to know this, <laughs> divided by four is 13. Okay, can we have a look at the answer? There's Susan. Yeah, 13 cards each. Aces. Unlike in poker, some of you would have played poker before. Where's an ace? I'll just fish one out of my pack. Uh, ooh, they're hiding from me. Oh, there, there's an ace. Yeah, the ace of spades. Yeah. So aces are always high in bridge. They're the highest card. Then kings, queens, jacks, tens, going down to the two, the order of the card. And there's four suits, spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. There's a spade, a heart a diamond, and a club. Four suits, 13 cards in each suit. 
I did tell you we're going to start from the basics. We're going to start off by just getting us into bridge, by playing a game of whist. So whist is basically only the second half of the game. Bridge comes in two halves, by the way. It's a game of two halves. Uh, the bidding is the first uh, part of bridge, which we're going to look at next week. Not doing any bidding at the moment. That's the slightly tricky bit. Um, the play of the cards is easier. Well, you may not think so, but it is relatively easy. So we're going to start by playing a game of whist. Some of you will have played whist before. Um, yes, it's very popular in the 80s. We used to play at uh, people used to play in village halls, things like that. And it's a simplified version of bridge, but I don't think it's not as fun. It's kind of lost popularity. And there's a, there are some things to remind us of the 80s. You've got George Michael, Margaret Thatcher. I don't know what that thing is to the right, uh, that kind of square block. Is it, is it a mobile phone? I can't be sure. Um, with Stanbridge, the opening lead is made to the player to the left of the declarer, uh, the dealer, sorry. So to the left, they play, they pick their card. It would generally be the lowest card from their longest suit, say the four of clubs. Okay, so they would place a card face up on the table. Remember their cards are hidden. So kind of like this at the beginning, all four players' cards are hidden. Whist and Bridge, no one sees them. Um, but then they make what we call the opening lead, which let's say is the four of clubs. Some of you might be tempted to lead out aces at the beginning when you play Whist and Bridge. It's not a good idea. No, the reason is, there's my idea across. <laughs> the reason being that aces really are better to hold on to to capture people's kings and queens. The thing is, if you lead out an ace, it will always make. But then the kings and queens will make from the opposition. Hold it back to beat a king or queen. Let's move on. Once all four players have played a card, and they all need to follow suit, that's really important at this early stage. We'll look at that in just a second. But let's say they've all played four cards. Then that is known as a trick. All right? So there's quite a few new terms we're going to learn this morning or this afternoon if you're watching in replay or this evening. But over the coming weeks and months, we'll consolidate that knowledge. We do learn quite a lot today. It'll soon become, it's just like riding a bicycle, becomes easier over time. And there are 13 tricks available to win in bridge or whist. So if you win seven tricks, then the opposition can only make six. So this morning, in this lesson, I'm going to try and make seven tricks, because then the opponents can only make six, and I will win the game in a fairly basic way. But yeah, should we move now onto our first hand? We're going to play some cards for real, well, virtually for real, on bridgebaseonline.com. Here we go. So, Bajir's lined it up. Uh, you can all see here what's going on. All four cards, all four hands are face up. Now, this wouldn't happen in a normal game, but for teaching purposes, it's much easier to show you. In a normal game, as I've said before, during the first half of the game, the cards are all held up like that. And in the second half of the game, you wouldn't have all four cards. Bridge would be a very easy game if they were all later. But it is easier for these lessons. So you've got North up there with a Queen, Ten of Spades. You've got South with a King, Nine of Spades. They're playing together. And you've got East and West. West is over there with the Ace of Spades and the King of Hearts. And East is over to the right with a Queen of Hearts. So it's all nicely laid out by this amazing American website, which has seen tens of thousands of people flock to it over lockdown either for playing bridge or learning it for the first time. And the dealer is marked for you online as South. Can you see that box up there, uh, there, with the, underneath the one? So South is the dealer. Now, I'm just going to get this game going. And the way I get it going is by doing a bit of bidding, which we'll learn next week. So please ignore what I'm doing just now. NT does sign for no trumps if you're interested. If you're not, it doesn't matter. Good. So now I've done the bidding. I've fast-forwarded that bit. Um, and we now... South is going to play this hand. So the lead comes to the left. So here's your next question, everyone. You can see the hand. Um, what would you lead with the West hand? You've got the hand with the Ace of Spades and the King of Hearts. What would you lead? And there's no trumps here. For those who played bridge before, there's no trumps on this particular hand. We'll talk about trumps in just a second. But here, what would you lead? Let's have some answers. It's good to keep things interactive. If you haven't used the chat box, well, have a go. And remember, just a little while ago, yes, just bear in mind, it's West is leading. That's the hand with the ace of spades, everyone. Let's make this clear. West has got to make the opening lead card. All right? Yeah, no, we can't. South isn't the leader. Just let's make this clear. 
West is the ham's lead. I, if I tried to lead the four of diamonds, it wouldn't let me online, by the way. No, it won't let me lead from a hand that I'm not supposed to lead from. It's West is the leader. That's the hand with the ace of spades, the king of hearts, the nine of clubs and the queen of diamonds. Which do you think? And I'm going to give you yeah, answers coming. Lots of answers. Well done. Michael, James, Susan, Gonzo. Some of you using the chat box for the first time. Don't be shy. You know, I don't like to name and shame. Susan. Yep, Gary. Get out of jail free card there for you. Remember, I said leave the lowest card from the longest suit. At this early stage, it's normally the best thing to do. OK, so there's you can change your answer if you want. Lowest card from longest suit. And a shout out to the four ladies from West West uh, Kittering as well, or Kettering even, uh, who have been recommended by Francesca. Morning to you. Right. Is the lowest card from the longest suit? It's a default lead. It's much better than leading out the ace of spades. Now, I'm just going to play this hand for you. I'm going to play all four hands. In reality, I would only play the south hand, playing whist. But I'm going to play. So second player play low. Talk about that. Third player play high. And I'm going to win with the king. Okay. So two guidelines there. Second player normally plays low. The third player plays high. Try and win the trick if you can. OK, and I've now won with the king of spades. So that is now a trick. OK, four cards. And if we're playing face to face, the trick would be gathered up together like that and go face down on the table. We collect them and we go along. Uh, playing online, it's all done for you. Now, what do I do at trick two, everybody? Can I hand it over to you? Because it is interactive. The lead must come from the hand who wins it. So south won with the king of spades. That's the hand with the ace of diamonds and the king of clubs. What do you think? And you can look at all four hands for the moment. You wouldn't be able to look at east-west normally. They'd be hidden. But which um, card do you think I should play or which suit? Should I play a diamond? Maybe a club? Should I play a heart? Or should I play the nine of spades? What do you think? And I'm going to try and make seven tricks here. That's my mission if I choose to accept it. Yeah. I've got to try and make seven before the opponents get to seven. Let's see what you think. I'm just looking at the chat box. Uh, what have we got? We've got a club from Lewin. North Sax is on a diamond. Susan is the ace of diamonds. Uh, another Susan is the nine of spades. I'm just going to give you time to... Gary thinks playing a club would be a good idea. <coughs> and also, this is very early days. For some of you, we've only been playing bridge for... Well, whist for 15 minutes. Uh, you may not have a clue about what to do. But like anything, the more we play, the more you learn, the more familiar you get with this wonderful game. But it is a game that you have to put some time into. You know, I'm afraid it's not like Snap where you can learn in 30 seconds. But that's the attraction of it. You know, you learn, you have fun learning, you meet people whilst learning, you meet people whilst playing. It's very social. Right. Well, I have to tell you, actually, the best thing to do is to play a club. I'll explain why. Second player, play low. Third player play high, and fourth player tries to win it. But do you see what's just happened? I've just lost a trick to the ace of clubs. But I'm very happy about that. And that's right, Vikram. So what we've done, we've got rid of the ace of clubs. And now when we get back in, the king, the jack, and the ten of clubs are winners. So this is a strategy, again, which will become much clearer over the coming weeks and months whilst we're learning, of lose to win. It's what Jeremy Clarkson didn't understand when he tried to learn bridge. He was a little bit impatient. He, he couldn't understand lose to win. Uh, he referred to, in his article in the Sunday Times, he referred to John Prescott saying in the 80s, you get there quicker by driving slower. It's quite amusing. One day I'll show you the article. Right. Now they're going to return partner Sue, which was a spade. Good to return partner Sue's in. This is whist we're playing at the moment, but it would be bridge as well, the second half of the game. Third player play high. And even though West can see the queen of spades in dummy, it's a good idea for them to play a spade, even though they know it's going to lose. Because, again, lose to win. Now, if West ever gets back in, then their eight and their five of spades are winning cards, Yeah, known as length winners. That's why length of suit, as you can see in bridge, is very important. You will never get dealt a 13-card suit. But if you were, that'd be absolutely brilliant. 
Yeah. Also, high card points you've seen are important as well. Aces and kings, queens and jacks. Now then, I am going to enjoy the fruits of my labor by playing a club to the king. I played bridge before, so I know that the ace of clubs and the queen have gone. You, you will be able to do that in time. Very good for brain training, bridge. Jack of clubs is a winner. And the ten of clubs is a winner. So we're enjoying the fruits of our labor. Lose to win. We've actually lost one trick to the ace of clubs, but then we gain three. Right. Should we just pause for thought? Oh, and one thing I do need to explain. To the left-hand side, that's the left, yep, you will see one, node, one NT by south. Don't worry about that. And you'll see a vertical line saying five. All right? So it's similar to the card. Gonzo's got a question. I will answer it. Are you trying to win as a pair? 100% Gonzo, yes. Yeah, it's a 100% a partnership game. So if partner's playing a king, you would never overtake it with the ace because that's partner's highest card. Yeah, I think it's very important to point out this early stage, Gonzo. Good question. That It's a 100% partnership game. It's not solo. No, that's why it's good to keep your partner in a good mood. Um, but where was I? Yes, um, just to the left, let's explain how the cards were. The computer's keeping score. So I have won five tricks. Look at it as lay down in defeat, so I've lost two, go up in victory. It's a good way of trying to remember it. So we've won five tricks. What do you think I should do now, everyone? I've got to try and get to seven, because then I'll win this particular game. I've just won the ten of clubs. So over to you. Here's the next question. Which card should I play from my hand? And I must play from the hand I win it in. So south one with the ten of clubs. I just need to make two more, don't I? The Vikram's first up. Again, a few of you, most of you will be complete beginners to the game. A few will have played before. I already get that impression. I can sense who's played bridge before by their answers. Well, answers coming in from Moana. I hope I'm not keeping you up, by the way, those who are in South Africa or New Zealand or Australia. Well, I think we can see the finish line because we. I really just want to make two more tricks. So, yeah, I'm going to play the Ace of Diamonds because that's a winner. No one's going to. And now one more trick needed. I'm going to play to the Ace of Hearts. Ah, I'm going to breathe a sigh of relief because I've made seven tricks. Oh, it's 5.30 in the evening, Mona. Oh, oh that's, that's very sociable. Um, yeah, and I'm going to play out the rest of the cards. It's polite. I don't expect to win any of them. I think another thing that's quite important this early stage is whoever wins the trick, they then make the opening lead. So if North won the trick, by the way, they then play the next card. And playing online is easy like that because it won't let you play from a different hand. Yeah, it's actually much, much harder to get it wrong online than it is on face to face. Um, they're going to play the Eight of Spades. They've remembered that's a winner from their good work earlier. And another, really, the golden rule, which I'll talk about in a slide, is you must follow suit. It's really the only important thing, particularly at this stage in bridge. If I play a spade, you must play a spade as well. And again, playing online, it's much easier because it won't ever let you not follow suit. Um, that's it. And the Five of Spades is a winner. for the East-West, and the King of Hearts. There we go. All 13 cards have been played out. And seven tricks have been taken. Forget the score. That comes a fair bit later. But I'm north-south on this particular hand of one. We've got seven tricks. OK, so there's not much more to be said there. Just again, I will say that in reality, um, we would south, sorry, south would only see the north cards. The East-West ones would be hidden, so it's harder to play. But obviously, for teaching purposes, especially as complete beginners. Good question from Anne. It's just come in on the chat box. What do you do if you do not have a suit? Well, you don't panic and you just discard. So if they're playing spades and you don't have a spade, you would throw away a diamond. Yeah, a low diamond. Yeah, when you're playing in no trumps like we were here. Trumps is slightly different. We'll move on to that shortly. But if you're playing without trumps, you just chuck away. Um, Bajir, it's all going smoothly so far let's go back to the slides i think we're back on them 
Yeah. And as I just said during that hand, everyone, as a general guideline, um, <clears throat> second hand plays low and third player plays high. Just to, you know, there will be exceptions to that, of course. Ah, golden rule. This is the most important rule of the moment. Look, there's some gold bullion um, that I borrowed from Brinks Matt. You must follow suit if you can. If you run out of a suit, then you can throw a low card from another suit. Yeah. So, again, online, it won't let you not follow suit. All right. Can we introduce the word trumps? It's not a plural of a U.S. president. Well, actually, it is. But it's a technical term in Bridge and Whist. Now, we've said goodbye to Whist. It was, it was fun. Um, the second half of the game of Bridge is similar to Whist. Uh, but we're going on to Bridge now. So if hearts are trumps, everyone, let's just find a heart for you. Yeah. And uh, next week and the week after, we'll talk about how we decide what trumps are. The moment I'm going to decide them for you. But if hearts are trumps, they are the master suit. The more hearts your side has in a particular game, the better. So literally, if I run out of a suit now, say the opponents are playing spades, I can no longer follow suit with a spade, I play a heart. That two of hearts literally could bring down the ace of spades. Yeah. So trumps are very useful in bridge. Be a new word for most of you this morning, apart from those who follow uh, the US uh, <laughs> politics. Um, yeah, what more can I say? Um, but no, on another hand, diamonds might be trumps. Yeah, it changes from spades to hearts, diamonds to clubs. And that's sorted out by the bidding, the first half of the game, uh, which we do later. Right, I'm just moving on to the next slide. There we go. Bajir, we're, we're, we're on to hand two now on BBO. Let's move over to hand two. I'm just going to line it up for you. It's one I prepared earlier. Yes, do ask. It is um, it is um, interactive, as you've noticed by now, everyone. So do ask the odd question um, in the chat box. I can see the next one. This is how we, what happens in normal lessons as well. We're always ask, I'm asking questions of you. You're asking some questions of me. Uh, who sets the Trump suit, Gary? That will come next week. Yeah, that's all done, denoted by the bidding, the auction. Uh, but we, we um, yeah, talk about that next week. Um, Yes, thank you, Lewin, for dropping by. I think maybe you've <laughs> done, done a fair bit before. Uh, right, Bajir, we are ready for this one. I'm just going to do the bidding first, just to get it out of the way. Ignore it, because it won't make any sense at all. But I just need to find out what we're doing. Yes, it will be the first two bids the highest, Vikram, when we come to the bidding. Right, so two hearts. Yeah, is the contract. We'll, we'll talk about that, as again, next week. But um, all you need to know is that South is playing hearts. So in this particular hand, hearts are trumps, the master suit. So if we run out of a suit, then we can play hearts. Cue a drink of water. Or it could be vodka. Which, what do you think? Right. So the person to the left of South makes, it's always person to the left, makes the opening lead. Let's just practice our opening lead, everybody. What, how, what card would you lead specifically? Your, your hearts are trumps. You could lead a heart. You've got the ace of spades. You've got the seven of diamonds. You've got the king of clubs. We're looking at that hand there, remember, west to the left. What card would you lead, just given what I've told you? And if you haven't used the, the chat box before, have a go. I know some of you might be viewing on uh, phones or iPads. It is preferable to view on a, on a laptop or a computer. iPads are okay, though. But obviously, the bigger the screen, the better. Phones is pretty tricky, I think. It's, well, <laughs> small screen, isn't it? But if you have to, you know, if all you can do is on the phone, that's better than nothing. So, yes, the lowest card from the longest suit. It's, it's a, gets the game going. Okay. Now, in Bridge, and again, this comes next week as well, um, just to be sure of what's happening, East and West... Never share their cards here, right? They're, they're the opponents, if you like, the defenders. They keep their cards. So we're playing face-to-face -face or online. You wouldn't be able to see East and West cards at all you know, until they play them out. So they are hidden. 
But what you would be able to see, if you're playing face-to-face, -face, North actually puts their cards down for South to play. So South gets to look at their own 13 cards and North's. But we'll look about, again, a lot's going to come next week, and the mechanics of all that we'll deal with then. For the moment, though, it's second player play low, and it's third player play high. They come back a club. Partner suit, third player play high with the king. And another club comes back. Why not? Partner might have run out. The defence have started well. OK, remember, I'm trying to get to seven tricks. That'll make me happy. Um, over to you, though. What card does South play now, spe specifically? OK, so we're talking about South, the hand with the ace, king of hearts, the king of spades, and the queen of diamonds. Which card does South play? It's their turn to play. We're playing in hearts, so hearts are trumps. Very good, everyone. All good answers coming in. I can see your name scores. James, Susan, Dennis, good morning, Annie, Sheila, Susan, Norfax, Vikram. Pat's joined us. Yes, Pat. Good. Yes, some of you have just, just joined the chat box. And right here, we must trump it. That trick has become ours. No one else's. Great. So trumps are so useful. In bridge, you either play with trumps or without trumps, again, denoted by the bidding. This hand we're playing with trumps. Now, what I'm going to do, generally good strategy at this early stage is to get out the opponent's trumps. So I've gotten, I started with nine between me, with north and south. I've counted them up. So I'm going to draw out the opponent's trumps. It's a good strategy for declaring most of the time. I'm going to start with a high one. So I, don't want, I want to lose to a little card. That's right, Vikram. We draw the trumps is a good move. Now, I'm going to pause there, but because I played bridge before, <laughs> since a young age, actually, I won't tell you how long ago, um, the trumps have all gone. Yeah, they divided two and two. You can see that from the screen. So obviously, this is why we have all four hands open. It's much easier for you to see what's going on, and for me as well, when I'm teaching. So what I mustn't, yeah, what do you think I might do now, everyone? Let's throw it back to you, because this is a joint effort. Um, I've drawn the trumps. I'm feeling quite relaxed. But what do I do next? Which suit do you think I should play? Do I keep playing trumps? Do I play spades or diamonds from the south hand? What do you think? Time for a little sip of uh, water. And yes, a big welcome for those watching in replay. Not everyone can make 10 o'clock on a on a Monday uh, a Monday on a Wednesday morning UK time. So if you're watching in the afternoon or the evening. Enjoy it. Most amazing thing about online teaching has so many benefits. Uh, one of the main ones, of course, is you can watch every lesson in replay if you can't make the time. And a lot of our class do, do just that on Monday and Wednesdays. Well, well, yes, what I'm going to do is get on with the diamonds. Very good. Good answer. I think one thing we mustn't do, yes, is... Yeah, is play trumps. I'm glad that none of you said that. Well, one or two of you did. But no, keep the trumps back to the very end. There are there are kind of um, safety net, if you like, these trumps. They're always going to make your trumps now. The opponents have all gone. So let's keep those back to the end. That would nearly always be the right thing to do. I think I want to get out the ace of diamonds. I agree with you. I'm going to play a diamond to the king. Yeah. Again, just like we did in the first hand. A good strategy. Well, diamonds are stronger, poor turn. Poor turns ask why diamond not spades. Now that the ace is gone, I'm going to make my queen and my jack. And I had the ten of diamonds as well, you see. So diamonds are stronger. They'll probably they'll switch to a spade. Second player play low. Third player play high. And one thing. West is on lead with the ace of spades. One thing they shouldn't do is play a club because then I would just trump it on the dummy with the nine, sorry, with north with the nine of hearts. So let's say they come back a spade. Second player play low. 
winning with the king. Queen of diamonds, I know, is a winner. I think this might explain, well, might explain why I drew trumps, because now I can play out my winners, safe in the knowledge I'm not going to get trumped by east or west with the three of hearts or the four of hearts. So here we go. There's the jack of diamonds. But again, things won't really start to make sense until you, the viewer, start playing the cards yourself. Probably online mostly at the moment, but at a later date, face to face with your friends or at a bridge club or wherever you like to play bridge in the airport. Yeah, uh, but online. And at the end of this lesson, we're going to give you a way to practice actually playing the cards out online uh, for free. Uh, so there's the Jack of Diamonds. The Queen of Spades is a winner. And we've just got winning trumps. Yep, let's play them out. And you'll see that we've done quite well. And it was a joint effort. Thank you for your help. Forget the score. We made nine tricks. And it's denoted there by the, you can see to the left. Vertical, we made nine. And the opposition, my robot friends, they only made four. Yeah, okay. So we made nine, they made four. We did well. We made nine tricks out of the 13 available. Um, what more can I say? That was a nice hand to play. Was, we were very happy to be uh, having hearts as trumps. Having nine between us is a good number. Uh, the opponents only had four. Right, Bajir, I think we can go back to the slides, please. And we are back to the slides. Just double check that we are. Yes, we're moving on now. You will have seen, and also at the end of this lesson, uh, you will get a worksheet as well, a detailed worksheet with everything I've been telling you about to download. It may be a good idea to keep a file, you know, print it out and keep it in a file or an electronic file if you'd like to say paper uh, on, your, on your device. Now, let's have a look at this slide. You will have seen in these hands, I've just played, I, I've just played. The picture cards, yeah, known as jacks, aces, kings and queens, known as honor cards in bridge, are very useful. Yeah. They're so useful that, in fact, when it comes to the bidding next week, we allocate points. So the first thing you'll do when you'll pick up your hand, either online or virtually, like this, 13 cards, you put it into suits if you're doing it, if you're holding real cards, um, you will add up your points. Four for an ace, they're the most valuable. Three for a king, kings are very good too. Queen gets two points. And should we see what you think a jack might get? Yeah. Go wild, have a guess, educated or otherwise. How many points are there for a jack in bridge? And again, if you've never used the chat box, have a go. This is the beauty of online teaching as well. You don't have to download Zoom or do a video or anything. We can just communicate via the chat box. So let's have a look. Annie, welcome to the chat box. Oh, you know you've been in the chat box before. Susan and Dennis, Susan. Gary. <clears throat> yeah. I think Moana. We can get move on, can't we? Yeah, you'd be disappointed if it wasn't one. So it's four, three, two, one. Yeah, adding up to 10. Okay, so there's 10 points in each suit. Not that you really need to. I mean, bridge, you know, you really only need to count to 13, the 13 cards you've got in your hand. Hello, Sue. Yes, morning if you've just joined the chat box. Right, but how many points, everyone? Four, three, two, one. Are there in a pack? Hi, Caroline. Um. How many points are there in total in your pack of 52 cards? Let's see. You don't really need to know this, but it's a good exercise. So those are the ace, king, queen, jack of hearts. The ten of heart. The tens are useful. We don't allocate any points. So clearly tens are a useful card, but it doesn't get any points. Right. Lots of answers coming in. Ian, James, Susan. Again, you don't need to know this, but it just keeps you keeps your brain ticking over. In fact, this whole lesson will keep your brain ticking over. And um, Bridge, <laughs> you will thank me later for learning Bridge in later life. Certainly, they did a medical survey in Florida. And those who play Bridge 
uh, avoided dementia, Alzheimer's, all those nasty things, and kept their brain ticking over. I do know people in the 80s and 90s who are still playing bridge. It really, really keeps them going, sociable, etc. But a lot of younger people started playing bridge as well over the lockdown in their 20s and 30s. It's been well documented in the press as a way of keeping in touch, having something to do. A new hobby. This this bridge will stay with you for like for a lifetime. Okay, there are 40. Yeah, because there's 10 points in each suit, four, three, two, one, and you times that by four for the four suits. It's not important, though. You don't need to carry that round in your head. I don't. Let's practice counting our points. It's something we'd do. So that's the hand you've been dealt. Remember, if you're playing online or face to face, the cards will be hidden. How many points have we got there? That's your hand. There's 13 cards. How many points have you got in your hand? And again, like, oh, there's my water. Again, like most of the things when you're learning a new skill, a game, this becomes second nature after a while. First time you've ever counted your points, you might get it wrong. Yeah, don't worry. People often do. The way I count, I try and get to 10 first. I'd count the ace of clubs as four. Queen of clubs is two, so that's six. I then add on the ace to make 10. I'd add on the three, the king of diamonds to make 13. And the jack of spades is one, so it's 14 points. You might do it your own way. I try and get to 10 first as a round number. It's 14. There's the answer. 14 is a reasonable hand, by the way, just whilst we're on the subject. An average hand, of course, would be 10 points. So 14 is OK. Um, yeah, any hand with 20 points or will be a really good hand. I think the most points I've ever had in one hand ever would be 28. That's a <laughs> pretty amazing, isn't it, out of 40? <laughs> Gary, others got it wrong too. Don't worry, it's easy to miscount your points. We've all done it, even the best players in the world sometimes miscount their points. And it was the first time you've probably ever done that. Um, right, here's an exercise for you all. Uh, even if you're not using the chat box, you will do this one mentally. If you had the choice as South, looking at the North hand, again, you wouldn't have this in reality because we would use the code called the bidding where all the hands are hidden. But if you had the choice with these two hands, what would you choose as trumps? So if, you don't need to add up the points at the moment. Just for the record, North has two. Uh, ooh, a lot of points in the South. I mean, it's seven, nine, 11, 12, 13, 18, I think. 19 even. Yeah, 19 in the south hand. Well, that took a bit of adding up. Almost needed a calculator. There's one of my props. <laughs> um, yes, would you like spades as trumps or hearts or clubs or even diamonds? Have a, have a think about it. Which suit would you like as trumps if you had the choice? You wouldn't in reality because you wouldn't be able to see your partner's hand. But if you had these two, two, uh, two hands face up in front of you, what do you think? And I'm just looking at the answers coming in. Clearly, it's between spades and hearts, isn't it? Yeah, you don't want to have diamonds or clubs. Is it hearts or is it spades? Well, I'm just going to talk you through it. You have eight spades combined trumps between you and you only have six hearts combined. Actually, you have seven clubs. You might have chosen clubs. But do you think, what do you think is better, to have eight trumps or seven trumps with clubs or six trumps with hearts? There's a little clue in there for you. And you can have, again, you can have your get out of jail free card from my junior Monopoly set. And actually, I'm afraid some of you fell into my trap. And don't worry, they all did this in January as well. Spades is the right answer. Should we go to that? There's the answer. Spades. It may look to you as though the hearts are brilliant, which they are. I agree with you. We love our hearts, but we've only got six of them. We've got eight spades. Remember, the two of spades, here it is, can bring down the ace of diamonds. It's just number of trumps, Moana. So this is an interesting exercise, Caroline. Yeah, the longest suit. I'd always want the longest suit as trumps because the two of spades yeah, can bring down the ace of clubs, ace of diamonds. Yeah, good. Um, what more can I say? It's the number of combined trumps. That's something we're going to do via this code 
uh, well, not code, language called the bidding, should I say. Yeah, not the quality of picture cards. Some of you, I'm, I knew some of you would say hearts. Yeah, that's why I, I, I set the trap. Um, can we introduce a new word? We've a lot of new words, quite a few new words this morning. And we do cover quite a lot of ground in this first lesson. We have to, really, because then we consolidate over future lessons. And we do go nice and slowly. You might think I'm going very quickly today, but I'm actually going a lot slower um, than, than most bridge teachers ever would. And again, you can watch this lesson in replay, pausing when you need to. Look at the worksheet. Yeah. If it's all gobbledygook, it doesn't make any sense. That's normal. Yeah. It will take at least three or four lessons, five or six, for it to kind of start to make sense. And now, um, coming there in, this new word is dummy. So South is playing the hand. The opening lead is made by West. They've led the time, two of diamonds. And then what happens in bridge is that North puts down the, their cards face up on the table. So South will play their own cards, which will be hidden to everyone. And so South would be like this. But everyone would see, this is the second part of the game of bridge. Everyone would see the North hand. Yeah, but we must have the opening lead first. If you play online, they won't let you do anything different. If you play face to face, you might try and put the dummy down first. No, you'll be told not to in a nice way. So the person opposite South North is known as the dummy, and they play no farther part in the game. No, they go for a they go for a drink or a cup of tea. Go to the loo. They generally stay there and kind of look to see what's going on. Um, but yes, and then South plays their own cards and dummies as North. Okay. So that's a new word for you as well, the dummy. So in bridge, everyone will get to see the dummy. West, east, and south, their cards are still hidden. Let's just make that clear again. But everyone sees the dummy's cards face up. And in reality, they would lay them out in columns if you were playing bridge on a table, a real table like that. Yeah, they're laid out in columns. Um, we can move on. So that's dummy. And there's another word for you, declarer. The person who plays both hands is South here, and they are known as declarer, okay, or the boss. And they have a very responsible job, because I've just said they not only play their own cards, they play the cards from dummy as well. It'll be a click of the mouse, like I've been doing online, or you'll physically play the cards, take them from the dummy and put them in the middle of the table if you're playing face to face. So there are two new words for you, declarer and dummy. Again, it'll become much clearer as we play on as we play hands out, who's who. Opening lead, dummy goes down, and then we start playing. So I would choose, if I was declarer as south, I would choose to play the four of diamonds. Yeah. Right. We can move on. Ooh, move on to almost the end. If you remember just three things in this lesson, and this is something we do in all of our lessons, we have just three things to remember at the moment, just to summarize. Three things, because we've covered a lot. So if you remember that ace is four points, three, king is three points, the queen is two points, and the jack is one point, four, three, two, one. That's going to be useful for next week. The opening lead is made from the player to the left of declarer, always. So remember that left is important. Okay, that is always the case. The opening lead starts the second half of the game of bridge. And as a general guideline, when you're playing as declarer, um, second player plays low and third player plays high. Sorry, even if you're playing as a defender as well, east or west, for all players, second player plays low and third player plays high as a general guideline. So those are the three things to remember, mostly. Let's see what else we've got to tell you about. Oh, practice sessions. Well, it's important to practice playing bridge. Yeah, really, rather than me just telling you how to do it and going through it with you. Either having cards in your own hand or what most of you will do at the moment is playing online. So after this lesson, Bajir, he's the boss at, B uh, at LBO, will email you with a link to play some mini bridge. Now, mini bridge is just playing out the cards, okay, like we've been doing on this brilliant website, bridgebaseonline.com, known as BBO for short. If you, right, just getting started on mini bridge, I'm just going to show you how to do it in a second. But if you have eight or more cards between you and the dummy, eight is the magic number, then choose that suitor's trumps. 
If you only have seven cards or left when you're playing mini bridge, I would advise you to play without trumps, which is NT. That stands for no trumps. And finally, choose one when asked about tricks and play your first card from dummy to get started. Let me just talk you through that. Um, there we go. There's the link that we'll leave there for you. Bajir will email that to you as well. And it's all for free as well. Now, Bajir, I'm just going to put the link in here into my laptop. Hang on a second. I just need to remember what the link is. Da, 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 da. Um, I'm just typing it in so I can show you. Yeah, I'm just going to take you through. Um, I had a mini bridge, so you can just see what's going on. But yeah, are we on the? Um, are you on that one now? Yes, he's on the mini bridge. Right. So I'm just going to move over to the laptop. And oh, that's interesting, isn't it? <clears throat> I'm just going to count the points. You don't actually need to count points here, no. But South has nine points, and seven, ten, sixteen, eight. Oh my God, twenty points is North. So let me select the trump suit. Well, what was what trump suit would you select? Let me, let me let me throw it back to the audience. Ask the audience if you like. Which suit would you choose as trumps there? Would you choose clubs? Clearly, you're not going to have spades. But would you choose clubs, diamonds, or hearts between you? You can all see the hand on mini bridge. So you've got. Let me just count for you. You've got eight diamonds between you. You've got seven clubs, and you've got. Eight hearts. So eight hearts, eight diamonds, and you've got seven clubs. So it's between hearts and diamonds, actually, isn't it? Because we've only got seven clubs between us. We've got eight diamonds and eight hearts. It's a toss-up, actually. It's very close between the two. Most of you are saying hearts. Um, well... It's close, but I'm going to say diamonds. Yeah, because I've got the queen of diamonds as well, you see. We've got the same number of trumps, haven't we? Eight. But diamonds, we've got the ace, king, queen. We're ever so slightly. There is only so. I don't mind you having trumps as hearts, but I'm going to choose diamonds. We, we won't argue over it. And so what I do is I put, I just click diamonds. If we only had seven or more, I would click NT there, by the way. We've got eight or more trumps. So let's have diamonds as trumps. And I'm just going to be very modest here. I'm just going to play one to try and get over six. I mean, you could be more ambitious if you want, but just to build up confidence, if I were you, when you play your mini bridge, and you play as many hands as you like, by the way, on this mini bridge, I'm going to go for one. I'm just going to make one lowly diamond. Right. I'm going to, it's normally second. Yeah, hang on a second. There are exceptions to second player play. Low. And here, if I play low from the dummy, remember, yeah, let's just work out the mechanics. We've had the opening lead to the left. North. And this is how it looks in a real game, actually. The dummy goes down as north. And you, let's imagine you're all me as south declarer. So all of us and myself, we're all going to be declarer. So we obviously would get to see our own cards. The opponents wouldn't. No, they would just get to see dummy. So the thing is, you see, if it's second player play low here, the queen of hearts wins the trick. That's not a good idea. So I'm going to win with the king. And then I'm going to draw the trumps, okay? So I'm going to start off with a low one to the ace. I'm going to play another trump. I'm counting them. You don't need to at this early stage. No, that will come later. But don't worry, I'm counting out the trumps. We have eight between us. The opponents have five. Yeah. It's very early days. I wouldn't expect you to be counting trumps yet. If you are, that's a bonus. Right, I can relax a little bit because the trumps are gone. Yeah, all five have been drawn, so I'm going to leave those to the bitter end. I'm now going to play out my clubs. Where are we here? Club to the ace. I'm going to play a club to the jack. I'm going to play a club to the green. And the thing is, the beauty of now playing out my winners, everyone, is that trumps are gone. The, the opponents had five diamonds, which, again, will, will become second nature, knowing how many trumps the opponents have. Um, familiarity is everything in bridge, as you probably know by now. Um, Gary, that will be done by the bidding. Gary's just got a question, everyone. How do you work out how many trumps you're going to make? Well, at the moment, yeah, 
seven or more. It's very simple. But in reality, Gary, that comes through the bidding, which is the skillful part in bridge. That comes next week and beyond. Right. But as I was just saying, I can play out these winners, everyone. Safe in the knowledge that no one is going to trump me. I'm not going to get a nasty surprise. Right. So now it's the ace of hearts. The queen of hearts is already gone. Making a funny noise. I don't know why. And the jack of hearts is a winner. And now the winning trumps at the bitter end. Yeah, you can probably turn off that annoying annoying beep in the in the settings. Um, oh my gosh! Oh, it's disappeared. Yeah, it's already on to the second deal. But I can tell you that we made. I don't think I can go back to the. Let's just look at results. Can I go back? Oh yes, I can. Yeah, by pressing results, we collectively it was a joint effort have made thirteen tricks. We couldn't have done any better. But I was very modest. Um, don't worry about the bidding in the top right hand corner. Yeah, no, that's just gobbledygook that we'll talk about next week. But we're just playing out the cards and it went so well for us. But look how many points we have. And we had a great number of trumps. So the combination of having a lot of points together, I think we had 29 points. And we had great diamonds, great trumps, and a tiny bit of skill from you and me. We were able to make all 13 tricks. But I did set myself a modest target. Just uh, which I would advise you to do as well, build our confidence. And then if you want the next hand, uh, oh, hang on, let's just get rid of this. Return to game. Yeah, I'm not going to play the next hand, but you can play as many hands as you like um, just for a bit of fun to familiarize yourself with how the cards work and build up some confidence. Um, Bajir, we're back to the slides. Well, let me just get back to them. HR here. Uh, oh, it's the end of the show. Well, that's not bad timing, Bajir. It's 10.57 UK time. We've been going almost an hour. Um, are you there? Thank you so much, Jack. And thank you. What a brilliant class. I'm so impressed. They, they did very well, didn't they? And um, it, it was good to see so many using the chat box. Indeed. Thank you, everyone. For uh, it, it takes courage, especially with a new game like this, for uh, you know to make guesses when you're not sure of the answer. So thank you guys for um, for doing that. Jack, I have, a, I have a question for you. This is something I've heard uh, uh, beginners ask this. I've also heard different people say different things about bridge. What would you say to someone who is interested in bridge, but they've heard bridge is really hard, or it, it'll take years before you can play, or yeah. maybe even after just watching today's lesson, they're feeling really confused. Yeah. Well, that's a very good question. I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, and certainly, there'll be quite a few in the class who will be confused. Yeah, wh oh, what's he on about? Who's declarer? Who's dummy? What's a trick? You know, that's entirely normal. They're not being thick. This happens the whole time. Uh, but the good news is, Bajir, we consolidate the knowledge, obviously, next week, the coming weeks. You know, we have fun learning over the winter months. It's going to be a great new skill to learn. But it is, yeah, I think, as everyone probably knows by now, Bridge is not an easy game to learn. Let's not pretend it is. But it's a fun game to learn. And I think it does have a bad image. It's something I've been trying to get rid of myself and other teachers you know, for the last 20 years. It's got an image of something you have to be highly intelligent. You know, it's kind of game you used to play, the colonel used to play in India, you know. But actually, it's become a lot more, um, should I say, ready available uh, to the masses since the lockdown. We've got a lot of younger people playing. Um, and you don't have to be intelligent. I know loads of people who play bridge, just four. I teach quite a lot of, uh, shall I say, mums. Uh, you know, in, in their 40s and 50s, they just sit around. There's four of them. They're, they're having a laugh. They're not playing particularly good bridge, but they're having a coffee. They're having a, if it's after six o'clock, they're having a glass of red wine. There's four of them having a social. You know, it brings people together. So you can play on so many different levels. You can be four beginners. You know, playing obviously not a great game of bridge, but enjoying it, having a having fun. Also, you can be at the top end of the game of bridge. You can be in a competition. You know, it's a club or, um, you know, in a championship, you know, playing in silence, concentrating on every card, you know. But And then you've got all those levels in the middle as well, intermediates, people who just play social bridge for fun. So you're, you're very, you're dead right to bring up this thing. And certainly with me, I do take it nice and slowly. Um, you know, things do consolidate um, over the coming weeks and months. So, uh, yes, I definitely, I think bridge is a game for everyone. You only really need to count to 13. 
And I loved, you know, you, you showed us with the last yeah. hand, even if we are confused, it can still just be fun trying to win tricks. So we, yes. I mean, I still feel confused, I think, at least once during every single hand I play. Yeah. And, you know, um, a, a, a little bit, we just have to sort of embrace that confusion. In a way, that's the adventure. Every hand is in a, an yeah, adventure. If, if it was snap, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here, nor would you. <laughs> you know, I mean, I do play snap. You know, I have played snap in the past, you know, with my children. But, you know, it, it's it's, you know, it's not exactly you know, going to challenge you or keep you going for long, is it? Bridge, you see, the brilliant thing about bridge as well is every time you pick up 13 cards, they're different. You know, it's a new challenge. Um, so, um, yeah, John, don't worry if you got everything wrong in the last 20 minutes. Your brain was probably a bit kind of, you know, bulging. And if, and if you feel like having a, a gin and tonic, everyone, or some paracetamol, yeah, you know, <laughs> join me. Well, everyone, um, thank you again for joining us. There's so many other ways you could have uh, chosen to spend this time. You chose it to spend spend it with us. We appreciate that. Um, I will email everyone who registered for these two lessons a link to the replay as well as a link to a worksheet which Jack has prepared related to today's lesson, as well as a link to where to how you can play that mini bridge. Um, yeah. If you haven't registered yet, in the description below the video, it'll probably be right down there. Uh, Make sure you registered so that you'll receive that email. And similarly, if um, in the future you came across this video and this is a replay, if I'll leave that link there, just regis register using that link and we'll be sure to get you um, all of the things referred to, the worksheet and the link to play the mini bridge. Yes, I was just going to say with you, if they can play, I know last time in January, uh, a lot of the class did play the mini bridge. And, that, and that's, yeah, it's pretty simple. There's no bidding involved. You just practice playing out the cards. Uh, the, the robots never answer back. So no, no one's going to um, say anything to you. But yeah, if you can play mini bridge, that'd be great. You'll email them the link. It's very easy to get onto. And I would just say, yes, you know, learning bridge is like an investment, really. You know, you, you, it's, it'll be confusing to begin with. But, you know, the, I promise you the clouds will lift. <laughs> and the, the fog, the fog will go over the head, and yeah, we'll have fun learning. You know, we'll we'll meet new people on the way. I know that many have made new friends, haven't they, Bajir, from the January class? Oh, indeed, it's it's a real friendly bunch. And uh, I mean, besides the fact that they've stayed, they've stuck with the lessons. How many of them have stuck with the lessons is incredible. But how many are now playing regularly on? Bridge base or yes. with their friends. Um, and in really time, really in, in a few weeks or maybe a, a month or so's time, we'll actually we'll tell everyone how they can meet up and play online together. You know, we've got our yes. own classroom, really, haven't we? Well, sort okay. of our own classroom online. Uh, but that'll come a bit later. But think for the moment, uh, just try and practice on mini bridge. Oh, look, Susan's off already. Uh, your <laughs> your mum, Susan Cannon, Brigitte. Yes, Susan, you you made you really made my. I, I had to yeah. stare twice. I had to say, yeah. wait. Would my mum have showed up without telling me? And yeah, she that, that, that was a good one. I liked it. Uh, so I'll be back um, next week, same time, same place, ten o'clock. I just say, if, if any of your friends want to join as well, do mention that we've you know we've got off, and you can certainly um, you know they can watch the first lesson in replay, can't they, Bajir? Um Absolutely. And, yeah, we'd be really grateful if you helped us spread the word about these two lessons. Yes, and um, yeah, it is a relaxed. Uh, yeah, that's what I like to put out. Sheila's saying relaxed teaching style. Yeah, I like to be relaxed, you know, try to take things slowly. But we had a lot of new things today, of course. But yeah, we had a lot of new terms, didn't we? We had tricks, we had trumps, we had declarer, we had dummy. All these words will, you know, become second nature in due course. Um, I really, I understand that bridge is a difficult game to learn. I think that's why I try and keep it nice and simple. And um, yeah. Well, maybe that, next week we will hear back from you guys how, uh, how you did playing that mini bridge. And yeah, as Jack said, you're playing against robots, so don't worry. You can experiment, <laughs> take your chances, risk anything. The robots don't judge. You can do what you like. And it will be interesting if, if, if the viewers can tell us next week um, how they got on with Mini Bridge. Uh, that would be uh, nice to know. Um, well, I think it's well. It's 5 past 11 UK time. So we've, um, we've, yeah, we're on time. We've done about an hour. Uh, so I know some people will be reaching for a, a coffee. Uh, Very good. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I, I, again, everyone joined us literally from all over the world. So, yeah, whether you're reaching for a coffee or uh, something stiffer, 
whether you're starting your day or ending it. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Jack, it's so nice of you to take the time to do this free lesson. We'll look forward to next week's lesson. Thank you. Yeah, well, I just love teaching this wonderful game of bridge. And I think one brilliant thing that the lockdown did bring to me and thousands of others is the ability for me to teach to a wider audience. So not just a few local people in North Yorkshire where I live. You know, we've got people up and down the country, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, New Zealand, Australia. Yeah, that's been fantastic. And um, I'm really pleased to introduce them to this game of bridge. Until next week. Thank you, Jack. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. Bye.